Okay, I guess I've put it off for long enough. Let's talk about the lab leak hypothesis. The idea that COVID-19 was either accidentally or deliberately released from a laboratory studying coronaviruses in Wuhan, China. I've only even mentioned this once before, way back in February of 2020, when I said, and no, uh, it wasn't manufactured by a bioweapons facility in Wuhan. Uh, there is a facility there uh, that studies the coronavirus. That name is not new, by the way. It's the general term that's applied to a myriad of diseases, including the common cold. But examinations of the virus's RNA suggest that the bat coronavirus being studied there shares a common ancestor with the current strain uh, from about 20 years ago. So they're related, but they're not the same. This was not a mistake on the part of the biomedical facility. So this virus has most likely been out there evolving from host to host for decades. It may have come from a bat, but more likely there's an intermediary animal that it jumped to. That's what happened with MERS, uh, a previous virus that jumped from bat to camel to human, and SARS, which jumped from bat to civet to human. And I left it at that because at the time, that's what researchers knew. And uh, most of the people who were pushing the idea of a lab leak were, well giant racists and liars who were just trying to gin up anti-Chinese sentiment. And what I said in that video was backed up the following month in a paper published in Nature by a coalition of virologists who found that SARS-CoV-2 is not a laboratory construct or a purposefully manipulated virus. But now, a year and a half later, that hypothesis is being touted by such papers of record as the Wall Street Journal. So does it now have legs? Uh, is it possible that all of those researchers were initially wrong about the origin of SARS-CoV-2? Of course, absolutely it's possible. That's part of the fun and frustration of science as it's being done in real time. We saw the same thing happen with masks, where at first scientists thought that the virus was primarily spread through surfaces, and they recommended washing your hands as opposed to wearing masks everywhere. Uh, But as more data became available, they had this real oh shit moment, and they ended up switching out their recommendations. And a lot of people thought that that meant that there was some sort of conspiracy to lie to the general public to stop them from hoarding N95s. But a recent uh, Freedom of Information Act request of uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci's emails actually supports that this is really what happened. Consider the fact that in February of 2020, Fauci uh, emailed someone saying that cloth masks are not really effective at stopping the virus. Later on, he suggested that someone use N95 masks. Eventually, he found that all masks pretty much are at least somewhat effective. The real problem is that it took uh, the CDC ages to update their recommendations. Literally an entire month after scientists were loudly proclaiming the data's in, masks work, uh, the CDC just took their time. They, they waited a month to update their recommendations. And that led a lot of people in the general public to be suspicious of the government, of scientists, and of the recommendations to stop the spread. So yeah, it's totally possible that more data can come to light and then scientists can change their mind about what is the most likely picture of reality. But is that what's happening right now with the idea that COVID-19 came out of a laboratory? The short answer is no. There is absolutely no evidence that COVID-19 originated in a lab, none. Of course, in the words of someone smart, absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. It's very difficult to prove a negative, if not impossible, which is why when scientists talk about the origins of this virus, it's just like when they talk about other things that they quote unquote know. We have a lot of evidence that it's natural in origin and no evidence that it originated in a lab. Because of that, we believe that it's natural in origin, but we don't have enough evidence to definitively say that it was not created in a lab. 
Therefore, we'd love to see more data to really shore up these observations and come to a more definitive conclusion. So I'm sure for a lot of people watching, you might be surprised to learn that there's no evidence in favor of a lab leak because of all of the press this has gotten. Surely there can't be all of the smoke and no fire, right? Well, most of what is leading to all of this talk is conjecture. Things like three lab workers had flu-like symptoms just before the outbreak, which happened to be during flu season. And there's a lab right there where the outbreak started. But of course, maybe they built the lab in a place with a lot of coronaviruses because they wanted to study coronaviruses, like the same way you might set up a whale watching business where the whales already are. Nobody thinks that boats full of tourists cause whales, right? Uh, but let me talk about one piece of non-conjecture scientific evidence people are frequently citing in favor of COVID's laboratory origins, which forms the crux of the Wall Street Journal piece. The two Wall Street Journal uh, writers, um, neither are virologists, one's an oncologist and one is a physicist write that the key to uh, this whole thing is the double CGG sequence, a chunk of the SARS-CoV-2 genome that is rarely found in natural coronaviruses, but is often artificially inserted by scientists looking to supercharge a virus. They acknowledge in their piece, yes, it could have happened randomly through mutations, but do you believe that? But a lot of Actual virologists who study coronaviruses, people like Dr. Amy Maxman and Dr. Vincent Rocaniello, do believe that this could happen through random mutation because that's how evolution works, through random mutations. Uh, that sequence might be rare, but it is in fact found in every single coronavirus just at different frequencies. Christian G. Anderson of Scripps Research Institute pointed out that if the CGG codon had been artificially inserted by scientists trying to supercharge the virus, then as that virus evolves, once it's let loose amongst the human population, we would expect to see it shed that artificial sequence because it doesn't really belong there. Instead, researchers have found that the variants have preserved that sequence, offering very strong evidence that SARS-CoV-2 prefers CGG in these positions, meaning that it's really likely that this was a natural development. By the way, you might notice that I had to pull those Anderson tweets from the Wayback Machine. The reason for that is because Anderson recently deleted his Twitter account. So you remember those Fauci emails that hit the internet last week? Well, among them was an email from Anderson himself in which he warns Fauci on January 31st, 2020, that some of SARS-CoV-2's features potentially look engineered. According to Newsweek, he later added that the unusual features of the virus made up a really small part of the genome. Anderson continued, we have a good team lined up to look very critically at this, so we should know much more by the end of the weekend. He added, following discussions with his team, that they all find the genome inconsistent with expectations from evolutionary theory. But we have to look at this much more closely, and there are still further analyses to be done, so those opinions could still change. And guess what happened after that? His team researched the issue, and in March, they published the paper in Nature that I mentioned at the start of this video, in which they concluded SARS-CoV-2 is not a laboratory construct or a purposefully manipulated virus. He likely deleted his Twitter account because he was being inundated with a bunch of conspiracy theorists who think that all of this is proof that he's being manipulated by China, as opposed to it being the clearest example yet of science working. He started with a hypothesis that this was created in a lab, but the data disproved it. Instead of throwing that pesky data in the trash, he published it. He published his results and changed his mind. That's science. It works. So if the only real evidence for this lab leak is something that was already examined by scientists and found lacking more than a year ago, why are respected scientists and people like President Biden asking for more data on the origin of this virus? Well, because that's how we stop the next pandemic before it happens. 
Scientists still don't know what animal, if any, was the intermediary between bats and humans, and how exactly the virus got past each time. Investigating the origin doesn't just mean figuring out for sure whether it came from nature or a lab, although that would be extremely helpful to be able to completely rule out the lab leak hypothesis so that researchers and the general public can move on. Unfortunately, you probably just shouldn't hold your breath about this issue. Um, Ebola, for example, was first uh, identified 44 years ago, and scientists still don't know the true origin for it. So just as scientists need to be comfortable changing their mind as new data comes in, they also have to be comfortable with the idea that they might just never find out the truth of a situation. And honestly, we would all be better off if non-scientists also got comfortable with that idea because, yeah, we might just never know for sure.